This weird creature might just be the best living explorer in the universe. Took him into space, put him on a satellite, opened up the door, set him outside, exposed him to extreme temperatures, vacuum, right? Hot, cold. Huge radiation. And they, they come back alive. This is the tardigrade, often called the water bear. And you can probably guess why. And they might even hold clues as to whether life on Earth arrived from outer space. These creatures are the best candidates to explore whether life came from somewhere else in the universe or it uh, emerged on Earth. Could they even be the origin of life themselves? So what is a tardigrade? They're aquatic, microscopic animals, barely visible to the naked eye as they're transparent and only about a millimetre long. They also love mossy conditions, which has earned tardigrades their adorable nickname, moss piglets. Oh. Tardigrade means, this Latin name, slow stepper. Tardy means slow, and grade, it refers to foot. You can start to see he's got long, thin filaments coming off his body, and some actual, more almost look like horns coming off his head that he uses in feeding. So why are these moss piglets the ultimate space explorers? Well, despite being water-dwelling creatures, they have a special process of morphing or adapting to hostile surroundings, like radiation or freezing temperatures. By drying themselves out, they can cope with all kinds of nasty conditions. As that sample drawer starts to dry out, as that specimen starts to dry out, uh, what's cool about these guys is they can survive that extreme desiccation, drying it's, down to like a crispy little booger. It, it, it's called a ton. They roll up into a special a tight ball, essentially, like a roly-poly bug almost, and then go through a series of, of radical chemical changes in the cells in their bodies to deal with this loss of water. Being in a ton form, tardigrades are as far from alive as you can be. But give them a splash of water and they spring back to life. What better place to test the robustness of a ton state tardigrade than the freezing sprawls of Antarctica? We extracted them from soils in Antarctica, shipped them back here frozen solid, and they've been frozen solid here at uh, at least minus 60 since 2012. Holy moly! It's mind blowing, dude. It's basically the same community that I saw when I collected them in Antarctica. We put them in a tube, froze them, shipped them. Four or five years later, we want to study them, right? Pull them out. We thawed them out. And now, what I'm seeing now looks almost exactly like what I saw when I was looking at them, like fresh in Antarctica. So they can survive the most extreme conditions on Earth. But what about in space? Byron and his colleague Carl took them on a special outing to the International Space Station. Took them into space, <laughs> put them on a satellite, opened up the door, set them outside, exposed them to extreme temperatures, vacuum, Right, hot, cold, huge radiation. And then when they brought them back to Earth, they did what you're seeing here. They dumped some water on them, see if they actually reanimate. Voila. <laughs> they, they take the water up, man, and, yeah. and they start, right? They, they swap it out the molecules and like a machine, man. You add the water to it, they take them up, cells start to do their thing again. And they, they come back alive. It, it always blows my, look, I'm an old fat dude and I've looked at these a hundred times. Thousands of times, millions maybe. You're not Man, well, <laughs> and, and then when I actually look at them under the microscope every single time, I'm like, dang, that's cool, man. Just like that, the mighty water bear enters Tun State and navigates brutal conditions that would kill almost every other living thing. So if we know they can survive in space and we know they survive on Earth, could it be possible that these space explorers traveled between the two, possibly even sparking life on Earth? When the Israeli space agency Space IL crashed their lunar lander Bereshit in April 2019, one scientist began to wonder, could the colony of tardigrades they had on board have survived? And could they survive a crash landing to Earth if they hitched a ride on a meteorite? 
Alejandro Traspas Muina of the University of Kent set about replicating the Bereshit crash and the kinds of pressures that this little batch of bears would have experienced by firing them out of a gun. Okay, so not quite a gun like that, more of a lab-based gas gun. Alejandro recreated the moon's conditions in a chamber and then fired the tardigrades into sand to recreate the impact that they would have had on that fateful day. Knowing how fast the spacecraft from the very ship mission crashed, we thought, well, let's try different speeds up to one kilometer per second, which if you think about it, uh, if just to get it into a daily activity. Just think you're in your car and your car starts going faster and faster and faster up to 3,600 kilometers per hour. So this is how fast tardigrades were shot. So we started with 0 0.5, which they all survive, 100% uh, survival, so that's great. We researchers happy, tardigrades happy, and we kept going. We went up to 0 0.7, and they again survived. Then we went up to 0 0.9, and unfortunately at these speeds, tardigrades couldn't make it, which means uh, they, they didn't survive the Bereshit mission. But this isn't the end of tardigrades in space. Alejandra's studies continue. She and her team are testing whether they could survive in the water plumes or the icy surfaces of the moons of Saturn and Jupiter. These creatures are the best candidates to explore whether life came from somewhere else in the universe or it uh, emerged on Earth. I do not believe life is unique to Earth. So don't write off tardigrades just yet. They and other extremophiles could still provide the answer to the life we live today.